If you love rock music, you've probably listened to Sweet Home Alabama or rocked out to the amazing Freebird solo by Leonard Skinner. These guys are the real deal, cranking out unforgettable tunes and surviving the wild ride of the music scene. But have you ever thought about how they came up with the strange band name Leonard Skinner? Well, we're about to tell you the full story behind it. Let's begin. Before we talk about the fun story behind the name of Leonard Skinner, let's go back to where it all started. A high school in Jacksonville, Florida, and a strict gym teacher named Leonard Skinner. It was the 1960s, a time of rebellious youth, and Leonard, with his strict policies, became a bit of a nemesis for the long-haired, rock-and-roll-loving students. Among these students was Gary Rossington, who would later become the guitarist of Leonard Skinner. Gary, along with his buddies Ronnie Van Zant, Alan Collins, Larry Junstrom, and Bob Burns, weren't exactly on Leonard's list of favorite students. The gym teacher, not a fan of the counterculture sweeping through his hallways, regularly sent these long-haired rebels to the principal's office. Now, let's talk about the turning point. One day, Gary Rossington, fed up with the constant suspension notices he received from the head teacher because of his long hair, decided to show up at school with his father. Mr. Rossington Sr. argued that his son's long hair was necessary to support the family, thanks to the earnings from their band. In a classic clash of generations, the head teacher suggested the young musician get a crew cut and a wig, clearly not understanding the spirit of the times. Drummer Bob Burns suggested the name Leonard Skinnerd as a playful dig at the PE teacher, combining a reference to the character Leonard Skinner from Alan Sherman's 1963 novelty track Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, and a mocking nod to Leonard Skinner himself. The band eventually settled on Leonard Skinner, throwing in the extra Y and embracing an odd spelling, which they say pays homage to the unique pronunciations of the American Deep South. Interestingly, Leonard Skinner, despite initial reservations, became a part of Leonard Skinner's story. As the band gained fame, they befriended Skinner in the 1970s. In 1996, Skinner, reflecting on the name, simply said, I just went along with the flow. There was not much I could do about it. But the story doesn't end there. Leonard Skinner took it a step further by involving Skinner in the design of their 1975 album, Nothing Fancy. They used a photograph of a sign from Skinner's real estate agency, including his name and telephone number. Little did Skinner know that he would soon be flooded with calls from fans around the world eager to discuss Leonard Skinner. As the band gained momentum, they found themselves headlining local concerts and opening for nationally acclaimed acts, building a reputation that would soon transcend beyond the confines of their southern roots. Pat Armstrong, a native of Jacksonville, and Alan Walden, Phil Walden's younger brother, stepped in as the band's managers. Armstrong, a partner in Macon, Georgia-based Hustlers, Inc., took charge alongside Alan Walden. Their strategic guidance played a pivotal role in steering Leonard Skinner through the burgeoning music scene. As Leonard Skinner continued to perform throughout the South in the early 1970s, their signature hard-driving blues rock sound took shape. The band entered into the studio, experimenting with recording techniques to capture the essence of their electrifying live performances. Drawing from a creative blend of country, blues, and a hint of British rock influence, Leonard Skinner crafted a sound that would become distinctly Southern. The pivotal turning point occurred in 1972, when the band caught the attention of Al Cooper, a musician, songwriter, and producer associated with Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Cooper discovered Leonard Skinner during one of their shows at Finocchio's in Atlanta. Impressed by their raw talent and southern rock flavor, Cooper signed them to his Sounds of the South label, which was set to be distributed and supported by MCA Records. The band's debut album hit the shelves on August 13, 1973. Led by the iconic anthem Freebird, the album surpassed one million copies in sales, earning the band a gold disc from the RIAA. Leonard Skinner's fan base skyrocketed, fueled further by their opening slot on the Who's Quadrophenia tour in the United States in 1973. Capitalizing on their newfound success, Leonard Skinner released their 1974 follow-up album, Second Helping. This album, featuring collaborations between Ed King, Collins, and Rossington on songwriting, solidified the band's breakthrough. The single Sweet Home Alabama, a response to Neil Young's Southern Man, reached number eight on the charts in August of 1974, adding another layer to the band's growing reputation. As Leonard Skinner's peak years unfolded, most of their records consistently sold over one million copies, with Sweet Home Alabama emerging as their sole top ten single. The band's energetic live performances, highlighted by the iconic rock anthem Freebird, cemented their status as one of the premier southern rock acts of the era. However, 
By 1975, personal issues began to cast shadows on the band's trajectory. Drummer Bob Burns left the band after suffering a mental breakdown during a European tour, and Artemis Pyle stepped in as his replacement. The band's third album, Nothing Fancy, faced challenges during recording, and tensions with their producer Al Cooper led to a parting of ways. Yet, the album managed to perform reasonably well, although it fell short of the sales achieved by its predecessors. Midway through the Nothing Fancy tour, guitarist Ed King abruptly left the band, following a falling out with frontman Ronnie Van Zant. This unexpected exit marked a shift in the band's dynamic and foreshadowed future challenges that would test their resilience. 1976 brought personal trials for band members Collins and Rossington, both experiencing serious car accidents over Labor Day weekend. Rossington's accident became the inspiration for the cautionary song That Smell, a vivid narrative about drug abuse directed at him and another band member. Despite the growing challenges, Leonard Skinner pressed on and released their 1977 album Street Survivors. The album showcased the talents of guitarist slash vocalist Steve Gaines, who had joined the band just a year earlier. Ronnie Van Zant recognized Gaines as a multi-talented force, claiming that the band would eventually be in his shadow. Gaines's contributions, including co-lead vocals with Van Zant on You Got That Right and the self-penned I Know A Little, added a fresh dimension to Leonard Skinner's sound. The album's hit singles What's Your Name and That Smell further solidified the band's position in the rock landscape. As the band geared up for their biggest tour yet, highlighted by the timeless anthem Freebird, they were blissfully unaware of the tragic events coming ahead. After a rocking performance in Greenville, South Carolina, on October 19, 1977, Leonard Skinner went on a chartered flight to Baton Rouge. Unfortunately, the plane ran out of fuel and crashed in a forested area near Gillsburg, Mississippi. The tragic incident claimed the lives of frontman Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, backup singer Casey Gaines, assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, pilot Walter McCreary, and co-pilot John Gray. Several other band members and crew suffered serious injuries. Remarkably, just three days before this devastating event, Leonard Skinner had released their fifth studio album, Street Survivors. The album, featuring a controversial cover showing the band amid flames, became their second platinum record and reached number five on the Billboard 200. The single, What's Your Name, climbed to number 13 on the charts in 1978. However, in a somber twist, the original cover was replaced with a more subdued image after the crash, out of respect for the deceased. Following the tragedy, Leonard Skinner disbanded, briefly reuniting in 1979 for a special instrumental performance of Freebird at Charlie Daniels' Volunteer Jam 5. The surviving members pursued different musical paths, with Gary Rossington, Alan Collins, Leon Wilkeson, and Artemis Pyle forming the Rossington Collins Band. During this hiatus, other members explored solo projects. Billy Powell played keyboards in a Christian rock band named Vision, and Artemis Pyle formed the Artemis Pyle Band in 1982. However, the 1980s were marked by personal challenges for some band members, including the death of Alan Collins' wife and his subsequent paralysis in a car accident. In 1987, Leonard Skinner reunited for a full-scale tour featuring Gary Rossington, Billy Powell, Leon Wilkeson, Artemis Pyle, and guitarist Ed King, along with Johnny Van Zant as the new lead singer. The reunion, initially intended as a one-time tribute, extended into a prolonged period, sparking legal issues with the widows of Ronnie and Steve. The band released albums in the post-reunion era, with 20 in 1997 and The Last Rebel in 1993. Despite lineup changes, Leonard Skinner maintained a strong connection to their 1970s era material during concerts. Tragedy struck again in 2001, when bassist Leon Wilkeson passed away due to emphysema and chronic liver disease. Ian Evans replaced him, and the band continued releasing albums like Vicious Cycle in 2003. The years 2015 to 2018 saw the passing of original drummer Bob Burns and former member Ed King. The band announced their farewell tour, Last of the Street Survivors, in 2018, intending to conclude in 2020. Despite the loss of key members, Leonard Skinner expressed their intention to occasionally play live shows after the tour. As of March 2023, all original members are deceased, with Gary Rossington's death marking the end of an era. In April of 2023, the band confirmed plans to continue touring despite the absence of Rossington, signaling a determination to carry on the legacy of Leonard Skinner.
And that wraps up the amazing journey of Leonard Skinnerd. If you enjoyed this story, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cool tales about your favorite tunes. We've got plenty more music history content coming your way. Thanks for watching. Thank you.